Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Prashant uh, to you. Prashant is from Ozontel uh, Communications. Ozontel is a up and coming startup. Uh, you've crossed the 100 million mark or uh, yet to do it in terms of revenue? In dollars or rupees? <laughs> uh, having said that, Ozontel, uh, you know, uh, probably has a very enviable customer base and uh, in the world of customer experience, you know, I've spent a lot of time using some of their solutions. I think uh, one of the very uh, rare single stack solution for uh, CX experiences and creation. And uh, today, I think we'd like to talk a little bit about the innovation that you are bringing in from a CX standpoint for the financial services markets. I guess you have some of the biggest uh, customer case studies. I don't even know if you can mention them, but I know how big some of those implementations are. So maybe a couple of lines just on the innovation part of what or how are you servicing financial services customers? Sure. First of all, yeah, uh, we, though we work like a startup, we are not a startup anymore. Uh, okay. About 300 plus in size. Uh, been in this space for 12 years now and uh, India's first and only cloud contract center in that sense. Uh, okay. Uh, and coming to financial services, right? Uh, some of the biggest customers are with us right now, uh, including HDFC Bank, entire contact center and customer experience runs with Ozontel. Uh, so we have HDB also, about uh, 17,000 field force uh, for sales. They use Ozontel. Okay. Uh, coming to your question about future, right? What we are trying to do. While there's a lot of stuff which is already there in the market uh, and all, uh, uh, when you look at customer experience itself, how do you want to improve it, right? Uh, there are two or three core pieces. One is where the customer's data is, which is CDP, right? Customer data platforms. So it could be a CRM, it could be in-house databases and all that, okay? The second piece is the entire user journey, customer journey itself, okay? The third is post customer journey, how you engage with those customers and how it uh, reflects back into your marketing programs. Yeah. So there are three pieces to this uh, puzzle. Okay. So we've already solved the in between piece, which is the customer experience, customer journey. If they're trying to get, uh, call your contact center or talk to you through various mediums, could be, could be WhatsApp, could be SMS, any channel they want to communicate with your contact center. But more importantly, now the question is, how do you use this and better your uh, sales numbers also? Okay. So everything finally turns out to how do you improve business? Uh, there are only two ways. One is either look at your sales or look at improving CSAT so you retain the customer forever. Mm -hmm. There are only two things you can yeah. do. Okay. So based on what uh, customers are talking to you as a business, uh, the future is building out a business intelligence platform. Uh, while a lot of people will say build sentiment analytics, build speech analytics, show your admins uh, real-time escalations, right? That's a good to have feature if you ask me, unless it boils down to a number which you can attach to, uh, it, it won't give you an ROI to you, you as a business, uh, any financial services company. Uh, like uh, recently, uh, uh, Angel One is a customer uh, in the broking business, okay? So, uh, while well, the COVID use cases there, work from home agents, all that, right? One uh, outcome of that has been that uh, their recruiting costs have gone down by 50% for the contact center because there are happy agents working from home anywhere they want to, right from their villages or towns as well. Uh, what has happened is their recruiting costs went down, which we also didn't expect. We didn't predict that, actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's an outcome. Also, one more thing. Uh, We'll talk about AI in a bit uh, from a future point of view, but uh, there are certain basics which are not yet covered. Like if you, especially this industry, right? Uh, most of them will have toll-free numbers, okay? Uh, toll-free costs for banks usually is about anywhere between 40 to 50 lakhs a month at the minimum, mm -hmm. okay? That's like the least cost I've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, with 4G coming in on the user side, uh, complete data-to-data -data calling can be enabled now. Well, mm -hmm. While the technology was there, for a long time, mm -hmm. user side data, it was a problem in India, okay. That itself can actually save costs, mm -hmm. okay. More importantly, how will it help with all the apps people are building? This is in-app calling, so the users don't need to remember your numbers or go somewhere to search for your customer service numbers. Even from uh, a lead point of view, while uh, you're promoting a lot of promotions uh, within the app, uh, when user wants to call you for that offer, they can directly click and make a call through data itself. 
so these would be some of the basic advances which uh, which are yet to be done in india especially hmm. us market we have seen this already but not uh, in india yet our market is also in the financial services sector specifically is extremely varied in the kind of channels that we have right especially now i mean you have digital only you have digital physical you have physical digital in terms of the skew ratios etc and then finally you have uh, literally whatsapp is now becoming a big uh, um, uh, channel how do you differentiate from a solution stack standpoint of being able to seamlessly weave together all these channels and create a seamless journey for the customer even if they have to jump from one channel to the other so a good example would be uh, the customer experience itself right uh, uh, we built uh, automated bots for some of the financial services companies where uh, irrespective of whether you come from whatsapp or a call or even web chats on uh, or in app chats from their mobile apps uh, everywhere the bot responds the same way the Got questions it. the flow everything is the same it's a, a unified customer experience in that sense yeah. okay now uh, the, the second thing uh, you can look at is uh, can the user uh, call from any channel or chat from any channel but more importantly can you as a business respond back the same way yeah. do you get the customer data irrespective of which channel they are coming to you okay so for this obviously we need to integrate with cdp platforms so uh, crm cdp okay uh, so basically that's something we do uh, and i would say that's like a very basic thing which any customer experience platform will have yes. to do so these are two core things for an omni channel solution without this so you can't uh, have a true omni channel solution at all got it Uh, over the last 3 or 4 months um, i think i have met some of your product heads a couple of times and there has been a lot of interesting insight uh, from a generative ai or a chat gpt standpoint in terms of how these seamless journeys can be created using them and you also spoke about bots and how they will uh, respond in a similar fashion etc what are you as a company building on from a generative ai uh, chat gpt standpoint is there something that you've already announced or is it in the works how are you going to look at it so uh, generative ai again is a very broad term yeah. right yeah. Uh, thanks to marketing teams they create complicated yeah. words uh, basically you're giving out data to an ai platform and it is deciding and giving out output okay that's what generative ai is but when you look at it you have to give out data first uh especially in this industry uh, can you give out customer data is a big question right mm. so uh, the way i foresee the industry going and that's how we are building on internally as well first thing is generative data generative ai will be used internally uh, within the financial services or any business actually mm. without even exposing this to customer service for example if a customer calls you won't might not see generative ai being used for the next 2 3 years but especially when you look at internalizing this uh, within the banks data or within the financial services data yeah. uh, that's where you would see lot of use cases coming in and that's where uh, like i said initially we are building out the business intelligence using generative ai got it so what happens there is we are trying to focus more on either cost saving or sales only two aspects yeah okay csat of course is there but that we can solve even now without generative ai there's no need for it uh, to improve the cx experience as such yeah i think you are also looking at life cycle value in terms of csat right i mean not just absolutely uh, the yeah. immediate score but basically over a period of time how does the journey look like yeah so uh, again typical use case it's not just about uh, getting the customer to uh, have a unified experience it's also about how quickly can you connect an agent Correct. does the agent have all the information okay more importantly uh, do you tag it back with a csat survey can can the customer give feedback and it is again acted upon so we enable all these things for our customers through contextualization contextualization yeah. got it uh, sort of to try and close uh, the discussion now i'm i'm sure you have a considerable set of uh, bfsi related customers and yeah. you have been one of the oldest uh, product guys at ozontel right and how do you feel um, is going to be the biggest complications for customers in the bfsi sector over the next 2 or 3 years i think what should we be aware of uh, as uh, industry 
So one is, of course, see there is there is lot of change which is coming up in uh, take Chat GPT for example, right? Generative AI, Chat GPT. Okay, mm. uh, people will start asking, why don't you use it? Okay, this segment is this sector is such that you can't use it just like that. Yeah. Uh, there is lot of compliance regulations that you have to cater to because money is involved here. You have to be very careful how you use the data, right? That is the single biggest complication which this industry is going to face. There's a lot of technological advances which will come in. Maybe an e-commerce company adopts next month, but uh, financial services industry cannot adopt it just like that. Mm. That will be the single biggest challenge. And uh, as a vendor, right, how do we make it compliant? How do we provide that securely and in a compliant fashion? That will be the challenge to us as well. Yeah. That would be the single biggest takeaway for the yeah, future. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know that you guys have been spending a lot of time understanding some of the policies that are changing every yeah. day in India. But thank you for this discussion. Uh, the screen has just shown me that our yeah. time's up. Uh, but I would have loved to continue another at least 15, 20 minutes. But uh, uh, hopefully that is for another time. And absolutely anyone who wants to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation very interesting products, uh, solutions from Ozontel for the BFSI sector. Thank Prashant you. is here. Please feel free to touch base with him. Thank you so Thank much, you. Prashant, for your time today.